So I have a new to me 2022 Model X base and the latch on the charge port has been causing me grief. So as you can see, it's difficult to put in the charge cable. And even when I do, lots of clicking, orange lights, apps going crazy, charging at half speed. And then when I try and take out the cable, it's just difficult. I'm pulling, I'm yanking, I'm pressing the button multiple times, doing the wiggle dance before it finally comes out. So instead of taking it to Tesla and spending hundreds of dollars, I'm gonna see if I can get after whatever's causing this latch problem. And so starting over in the front, I'm gonna disconnect the power, uh, which is located underneath the apron here. Pop that off with those tabs. It literally just lifts up, no special tools required. And then there's two things you need to disconnect here under the apron. On the left-hand side, the passenger side, you need to disconnect the low voltage power, LV power. You lift up that green tab and then pull that black part out. And then you can just lift up the cable connection from uh, that, that little battery. Not sure what it is. And then you need to disconnect also the fireman's loop. And so you pull that red tab back and squeeze and then it comes right out super easy. And there you go, there's a quick look at the cable disconnected, the power disconnected, and the fireman's loop also disconnected. And you'll see a sign of things to come. Again, new to me, this car was not well loved. There's a lot of dirt everywhere when I first bought this car and that's just, again, just a prelude. But onto the back of the car, gotta remove this stuff. The service manual says you gotta clear everything out in this car, but I'm lazy, so I'm going to do the path of least resistance, get whatever I need out of the way so I can get access to the charge port. This is what I've done so far, and as I pull this back, I can start to see that I'm heading in the right place. That's what I need to get after, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this carpeting here uh, very carefully without breaking anything, and now I have unfettered access to what I need to pull out, which is that charge port. Uh, to do that, I'm gonna disconnect some things. You'll see the cable right there. Uh, there's a smaller cable right there to my right, uh, and then also the high voltage. So this is the large cable above uh, the high voltage lines. That's the smaller cable. Again, comes out really easy. You pull the tabs back and then squeeze. Uh, they both come out pretty straightforward. That guy was a little bit of a pain, but wasn't too terrible. After that, you take, up, take off the orange cover. It just lifts up and pulls out. And then you need to undo those two 11 millimeter bolts. But before that, I'm gonna make sure I don't electrocute myself by testing that to make sure that there's no power. Uh, doing this one-handed with the camera, but I did verify that I am not going to get shocked as I start unbolting these things. So, six bolts total, the two 11 millimeter bolts on the high voltage cables and the four 10 millimeter bolts that actually keep uh, the charge port attached to the car. Uh, again, those two cables right there. And then lastly, the manual latch pull right there, which is located somewhere along the top side of one of these plastic things. And it's held down by a zip tie. I'm trying to hunt it down here with the camera so you can see where it's at. And yep, there it is. It's attached to there again by a zip tie. I simply cut the zip tie made it easier. I can replace the zip tie, the super easy, as opposed to trying to finagle that entire little piece out. So this is what I'm working with, guys. This is the car that I bought. It was not well loved. And so I'm gonna take this back to the bench, get it cleaned. Now that I've got it clean, I'm gonna try and get access to uh, the latch housing. It's secured by two T20 Torx security bolts. You'll see the little nub in there. It requires a special Torx tool, uh, tamper-proof security. That's called different things, but basically it's got to have a little hole in the middle of your T20 Torx bolt to get after those two uh, little screws. Once you do that, you can pop off the cover to the latch housing, which is going to let us figure out what's going on in there and why this thing isn't working. Uh, so pull that off, and as you can see, uh, inside looks pretty clean, but I was quickly able to determine what the culprit is. Uh, and it's not really the dirt. It's the fact that this little guy was not moving at all. Try as I might, pushing it in, pushing it out, I really had to go at this thing to get this out. Yep, that's how hard I had to pull. So, come to find out, my problems and probably your problems too if you're having a stuck latch issue issue it's that o-ring right there that o-ring was just not doing it anymore 
Uh, again, the, the hole that the latch goes inside of looked pretty clean, but I gave it a once over nonetheless. Did scrub down the latch because it was a little bit gunked up around the O-ring. So just doing a once over here. And with the O-ring guys, you don't need anything fancy. I went to my local parts store, got a universal pack, and you'll see that's the original O-ring there on the left. And I pulled out two, one that matched it and one that was smaller. And I went with the smaller one. Uh, and I did verify after I put it in there that it did seal and it did help with the sliding. And so you're going to see that here in this next shot. Sliding it right in. And this is before I used some grease that it's going in a lot easier now. It's traveling freely. It's no issues at all. I'm very easily moving this up and down. So things are looking better and just make sure uh, that it won't cause any issues in the future, just using some all-purpose grease. Not sure if that's exactly the right type of grease I should be using for this, but it's what I had on hand. And as you can see right here, it did the trick just fine. And again, did verify that the O-ring does seal. It wasn't too small. And so I also wanted to make sure that the orientation of the latch is correct to make sure that it fits there on the servo. Uh, because the servo is what's going to make sure that it goes up and down as you need to. And so flipping on the back side after I got it reset to make sure that it, the notch was aligned within the servo. And it is, you can see, moving the servo up and down, left and right. The latch is falling with it. So now all I need to do now is secure the two Torx screws. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to head back outside. And installation is basically the reverse of the removal. Be absolutely sure that you've installed all the bolts. You do have to have that orange cover on for sure. Otherwise, it will not charge the car. Uh, everything basically has to be connected uh, before anything will work. In the front of the car, make sure that you install the fireman's loop before you connect the low voltage battery. There is an order to that procedure. Uh, and so you'll see that I'm doing that right now. The, uh, the fireman's loop was already connected. And again, it's you can do it one-handed. Push it down, push in the black part, and then press down the green little latch. And it's good to go. And now we give it a test. Press the button. And you may not see it in the video, but the latch went straight down, slid right in, no issues whatsoever. It's bright at this point in the day, but fires right up. Everything's working the way it should. And it comes right out without any issues. Door closes, everything's operating as it should. This was my issue. It might possibly be your issue if you're having issues with your latch. It could be something as simple as that O-ring. Obviously not the easiest thing to get to. In total, this, thing, this job took about two and a half hours. Not the most difficult job mechanically. It was a bit involved with removing things and making sure power is disconnected, but the job itself, once you're there, is pretty straightforward. You only need the one special tool, which is the Torx bit. But again, two and a half hours of my time to save six to $800 uh, and not have to replace the entire charge port, that's a win for me, especially since I'm out of warranty because the car is over 50,000 miles. I hope this video was helpful and I'm looking forward to any feedback or advice in the comments below uh, on this job here. Again, kind of did it on the seat of my pants uh, and hopefully it helps some other folks out there who might be facing a similar issue. Thanks for watching.